Well, according to our records, you never paid any That's right. Well, why not? I don't believe it. You own a profit, don't you? I do. And you're receiving yearly income from it, right? That's right. From about three to four thousand dollars, correct? About that. And you've been receiving it for years. 1901, if you want the exact date. Well, the government's only concerned 1949. That's when the income tax started. Well? Well, Mr. Randerhoff, it seems that you owe the government 24 years back income tax. Hey, you can't go back that far. That's out of order. And you are? What difference does that make? <laughs> <laughs> Ever found the income tax? No, ma'am. What was your income from last year? $28 and... Fifty cents. What's that right, Essie? Yes, sir. If you please. Now, Mr. Vanderhoff, you do realize there's quite a penalty for not filing income tax. Oh, penalty? Ms. Henderson, do you mind if I ask you something? Well. Suppose I pay this money. Mind you, I'm not saying I'm going to pay it. Mm -hmm. But just for the sake of argument, what's the government going to do? How do you mean? Well, say I go into uh, Macy's and I buy something. There it is. I see it. What's the government going to do? Why, the government gives you everything. It protects you. From what? From invasion from foreigners might come and take everything you've got. I don't think they're going to do that. If you didn't pay income tax, they would. How do you suppose the government's supposed to deal with the army, the navy, all those battleships? Last time we used battleships was the Spanish-American War. And what we got out of that? Cuba. We gave that back. No one might do something more sensible. Sensible? What about Congress, the president? We've got to pay them now, don't we? Not my money, no man. Listen, I'm not here to argue with you. All I know is you have to pay income tax and you've got to pay. They have to show me. They don't have to show you. I just told you. All the buildings out of Washington, the interstate commerce, the Constitution. The Constitution was paid for long ago. And interstate commerce? What is interstate commerce anyhow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's 48 seats. See? And if there wasn't interstate commerce, nothing would be able to go from one place to another. See? Why not? They got fences? No! Well, I'll pay about seventy-five dollars. That's all it's worth. Like I'll be seventy, like everybody else. Listen to this, Essie. Listen to this a minute. And let me tell you something. Here, <laughs> that's the law. If you think you're bigger than the law, you got another thing coming. You know better than anybody else. And the sooner you get up to your little head, the better. You'll steal from the United States government. That is all I can say. Good day. Look out for the snake. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Who was she, anyhow? Uh, oh, this must be Mr. Kirby. I better make sure this time. Oh, oh, yes, I will. Oh, I hope he's good looking. <clears throat> Hello? Good evening. Are you Mr. Anthony Kirby, Jr.? Uh, yes. Oh, I'll come right in. We've been waiting for you. I'll come right in. <laughs> this is really Mr. Kirby. Now, I now is his mother. And this is Grandpa, and that's Mr. Sycamore, and that's Essie and her husband, Ed. Oh, now make yourself right at home. Oh, it's Mr. Kirby. Oh, and he's lovely. Oh, do take a seat, Mr. Kirby. Oh, thank you. I uh, hope I'm not keeping you for dinner. No, not at all, Tony. Uh, have an orange. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, well, please have a piece of candy, Mr. Kirby. He just had to testify before the Securities Commission. Oh, uh, well, I'm, no, I'm sure there's nothing crooked about it, Mr. DePena. As a matter of fact, Al stopped and told me what a lovely man your father is. Well, Father knows he couldn't get along without him. She knows the business better than any of us. Um, Mr. Kirby, um, aren't you a little young to be the vice president of a big company and such? <laughs> Did you see any? Oh, quite. Incredible. Oh, oh, they are, huh? Well, now the fun's over. I'm facing the real world. Oh, and with such a good start, Vice President and the rich father! <laughs> well, 
that's partly my fault. <laughs> so now, I suppose you're ready to settle down and get married. <laughs> now, Penny, I'm sure Mr. Kirby here knows his own mind. Oh, now I wasn't making up his mind for him. Well, was I, Mr. Kirby? Is it quite all right, Miss Sigmore? <laughs> you mustn't rush him, Mother. <laughs> oh, well, well I bet he's about to get married. Let's suppose the wrong girl gets him. Well, here I am, in vision and blue. <laughs> for, say, all the rice in China. Really? Trust my heart. Is there much rice in China? Terrific. Didn't you read the gooder? <laughs> like, guess how to go. Is it very late? Very. I don't want to go. I don't want you to. All right, I won't. 
the same. When do you plan on taking vacation? Um, last two weeks in August. I might take mine then too. Really? What do you plan to do? Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought much about it. Going away, do you think? No, I might not. I like the city in the summertime. I do too. But you always go up to Maine, don't you? Well, that's true, but I'm sure I wouldn't mind in the summertime if... Oh, you know what I'm saying. I'd love it if you were here. Well, it'd be nice if you were here, Tony. You know what you're saying, don't you? What? That you'd rather spend the summer with me than anybody else? Was I? Well, it's true about summer. What do you say about, say, winter? Yes, I, I want that too. And then there's spring and autumn. If you can see away clear those, Miss Sigmar. I might. And that's the whole year. I guess we haven't forgotten anything, have we? No. Well then. Alice, that was all the time, is it? Oh, oh. oh excuse me, Mr. Kirby. I, I didn't mean to. I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt anything. No, Mom. Oh, I just came down for my nanny skirts, and then you can go right ahead. <laughs> Here it is. Sex takes a holiday. <laughs> well, good night, Tony. Good night, Miss Sigmore. Oh, I think you can call me Penny. Don't you, Alice? Or at least I hope so. <laughs> what was that? Uh, don't worry, Tony, that was just father. This time of night? Any time of night and any time of day. You know, you're more beautiful, more lovely than anything else in the whole world. No, don't, don't, don't. Why, my dear, just because your mother? Oh, Penny's a darling. See, you didn't call her Penny. No, I don't, I don't mean that. Look, Tony, this is something I should have said a long time ago, but I, I didn't have the courage. I got swept away because... I loved you so. No, no, tell me, I need to make it clear to you. You're of a whole different world, a whole different type of people. I don't mean money or socially, that's silly, but your family and mine, it just, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. All right, have it your way. You can't dance. That's why they pay her all that money, because she can't dance. Well, I don't call that dancing what she does. <laughs> oh! Hello. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Moore? How was the ballet? It was fine, I see. Listen, Ed and I just saw Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Do you think she can dance, Mr. Kirby? Well, yes, I've always thought so. What does she do, anyhow? Now look, you're Fred Astaire and I'm Ginger Rogers. Essie, Essie, please. Essie, <laughs> Essie, Essie, just as good as Ginger Rogers, we all agree. <laughs> Thank you. 